So you're swimming two miles down at the bottom of the ocean. Don't ask me how, just play along. It's cold and the pressure is intense. No fish in sight. Then you notice a green, shiny thing. It's a cookie-cutter shark. Its neck glows in the dark to attract fish and other delicious treats. The shark doesn't look like much. It's small, about the size of a cat. It has brown skin and large green eyes. But looks can be deceiving. Every night, this creature rises to the surface and goes after great white sharks, whales, even swordfish. If you look closely, you'll see a round mouth with a bunch of sharp teeth in it. They don't just bite, they work kind of like a saw. This one's called a cookie-cutter shark because when it sees something delicious, it takes a cookie-shaped bite out of it. These sharks have even been known to disable submarines. Wonder what flavor they are. Our next shark is about the length of a car. Only about a hundred of these sharks have ever been seen, but if you met one, you'd never forget it. It has a big mouth, a huge mouth, a mega mouth, like me! It's the mega mouth shark. You could easily fit in it if you curled yourself up. They're not dangerous though, not to humans. They feed by swimming around with their mouths open, filtering out plankton and other underwater goodies. The shark has special organs in its mouth that glow, attracting little crustaceans. It swims deep in the ocean in total darkness. Probably has a great smile, though. Thresher sharks also have a huge body part, the tail. It's almost half the length of the shark itself, and it looks like a helicopter blade. It's one of the few animals that hunts using its tail. The shark sneaks up on a school of fish and starts to shake its moneymaker. This freaks out some of the fish, which is exactly the plan. In a pinch, it can also use its tail to defend itself. The best thing about this shark? It doesn't attack people. The angel shark. There are quite a few types of angel shark out there, but they're more shark than angel. They're flat like stingrays, and their skin is covered with patterns that help them blend in with the seafloor. Because of this disguise, divers sometimes accidentally touch them, which isn't the best idea. They're fast and have powerful jaws. Still, they prefer the taste of small fish to you. The horn shark has two ridges that look like horns right above its eyes. It's definitely the grandpa of the shark world. Not aggressive, swims pretty slowly, and is up late almost every night. Its two favorite meals, sea urchins and crustaceans. It moves its fin on the seafloor, almost as if it had paws. But don't underestimate this guy. It has one of the strongest bites of any shark. It needs those strong teeth to crush the shells of its late-night meals. And if something tries to attack it, watch out! Horn sharks have sharp spikes on their fins. The award for the ugliest shark goes to the goblin shark. And it's not even close. From the outside, it already looks kind of weird and is about the size of a pink underwater motorbike. It has a long tail and a seriously long nose. It lives way down in the depths of the ocean and loves to eat squid. It's not as fast as its relatives, but it's way more sneaky. It has a secret squid-catching technique, which is totally wild. The shark swims behind the squid. It's catching up, getting closer and closer. But the squid isn't slowing down, no way! It looks like the poor goblin shark won't have any lunch today. Then it opens its mouth. Its jaw is attached to folds of skin that mean it can literally throw its jaw out of its mouth. And it's a shark, so those teeth are sharp. That extra reach helps it grab its lunch. And when the meal's over, it pops its jaw back in its mouth. These sharks have been seen many times off the coast of Japan. They're actually named after the goblins in Japanese myths and fairy tales. There's only one thing out there cooler than a ninja shark. It's the ninja lantern shark. Imagine there's a tube you can slide down that takes you to the bottom of the ocean. It's too dark, you can't see anything. Suddenly, a glowing dot, moving around in the distance. It's coming closer, shooting towards you. It's a blue glowing head. Worse, it looks like this head doesn't have a body attached to it. The ninja lantern shark has black skin, so it's almost invisible in the dark. It's only the size of a human arm, but its small, sharp teeth are no joke. No one really knows why this shark glows. 
maybe to attract tasty fish? Another theory out there is that it uses this light to communicate with its friends. It has friends? The hammerhead shark. These ferocious sharks can weigh up to half a ton. They live in tropical waters all over the world, and they're one of the most recognizable sharks out there. Their eyes really are located on the sides of their hammerhead. This means they can see in almost all directions. They even have special neck muscles to lift their head up and down just to see that little bit better. Their favorite food? Stingrays. You know, those flat things that swim along the seafloor, camouflage to look like sand and bits of rock. Stingrays get by by blending in with their surroundings. Danger mostly just swims by. But the hammerhead's eyes see everything. Uh Uh-oh. Great white sharks, hammerheads, and other large sharks live for about 25 years. But one shark can live much, much longer. The Greenland shark can live anywhere from 300 to 500 years. It lives mostly in the North Atlantic and Arctic oceans. It loves to swim deep down where it's dark, so it uses its nose to sniff out food. Since it spends so much time down there, it's figured out how to withstand the strong pressure. It's one of the oldest living, largest, and slowest fish on Earth. Just imagine, you're on an Arctic cruise, and you see one of these sharks moving slowly through the freezing cold water. It might be 400 years older than you. Most sharks are omnivorous. They can go after dolphins, other sharks, crabs, sea urchins, smaller or even larger fish, hot dogs. Eh, kidding about the hot dogs. But the bonnethead shark is a bit different. It eats algae for about half its meals. It's actually related to the hammerhead shark, but its head looks more like a shovel. Can you dig it? If you see this guy swimming around, you might think it's a sea snake or a huge water worm. Frilled sharks like to swim way down at the bottom of the ocean, like a lot of sharks. When they're chasing something delicious, they move kind of like a snake. And just like a snake, They like to gulp down their lunch all in one piece. But that doesn't mean they don't have teeth. They have about 200 nice and sharp ones. The saw shark has a long, flat, and seriously spiky nose. Those teeth on its nose never stop growing. Each tooth is equipped with electric receptors to help the saw shark feel around for nearby fish, like a ship's radar. When dinner's nearby, the shark swims up and strikes with its nose, waving it around like a knight showing off his skills. Meanwhile, you won't have time to blink if this guy floats past. Did you see it? How about now? Meet the fastest shark in the world, the short fin mako shark. It can swim up to 35 miles per hour. That doesn't seem that quick on land, but underwater, that's fast. Slower than a cheetah, but faster than most dogs. It's warm-blooded, which is super rare for a shark. That helps it swim to cold and distant places where an ordinary shark simply wouldn't survive. The swordfish goes much faster. It can swim up to 60 miles per hour. It's not a shark, but it's still an amazing creature. In a race, the swordfish will usually come out on top. But it's not just fast, it's ingeniously fast. It has a gland next to its nose that pumps out a special oil. This oil spreads through its nose and comes out through tiny holes. This special oil is waterproof, which lets the swordfish glide through the water at high speed. Hey, let's take a deep dive into ocean waters to see which of these creepy-looking animals are our friends. We're swimming in the tropical waters of Nanina Balava Island near Fiji. Can you see those giant creatures the size of a Volkswagen Beetle? Those are manta rays. They've got a long, whip-like tail and large, flat diamond bodies. There are two species of manta rays, the reef manta ray and the giant manta ray. They belong to the same family as sharks, but they only have small teeth in their lower jaw. They feed on zooplankton, tiny fish, and crustaceans. Manta rays are social animals, and they like people. Once you let them come close to you, they'll swim around you to observe you. Don't chase them, though, because they're super-fast swimmers. Their name translates to cloak or blanket, and out of all sea creatures, they've got the largest brain compared to body weight ratio. 
these fellas can recognize themselves in a mirror. The Asian sheep's head wrasse follows. Even if it seems unsightly, it's one of the friendliest fish you'll come across in the shallow waters of Japan, China, and Korea. It has protrusions on both its jaw and head. It likes to hide in its anemone, and it's usually scared to go out even at 40 inches long. One of these fellows developed a friendship with a Japanese scuba diver 30 years ago. When the diver found the fish, it was injured, and he helped it recover. The diver had been the caretaker of an underwater Shinto shrine. He calls the fish by hitting the underwater bell. Time to go swimming with the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Though these creatures are sharks, they have a lot in common with whales. They can live for 100 years, though they've got tiny brains. They're indifferent to humans. These fellows don't care about anything they can't eat. And unlike other shark species, they won't bite you. Whale sharks are filter feeders. They do have teeth, 3,000 of them, but they don't use them. They've got a massive mouth, like me. But their throat is only the size of a quarter. Next, we have the sunfish. A fish without a tail that looks like it's been cut in half. It has large fins, and when you see it breaching on the surface, you'll think a shark is approaching. The sunfish dives deep in the water to let other fish exfoliate his skin and remove parasites. Once they're done, it returns to the surface to sunbathe. It's also a voracious eater. If it sees you in the waters, it'll likely approach you and observe you. Within a day, you'll be able to feed it from the palm of your hand. Time for the animal that looks like it's always smiling, the bottlenose dolphin. It's one of the most social sea creatures, and it travels in groups. It enjoys playing, hunting, raising calves, and helping out its community. Bottlenose dolphins are excellent swimmers, with speeds reaching 19 miles per hour. They usually come up to the surface to breathe air through the blowhole on their head. These creatures are great communicators, and they send messages to each other. They use echolocation to navigate and find food. When they spot people, they become very friendly, so much that they let their guard down, and it makes them vulnerable to other sea creatures such as sharks. Heading to the Pacific coast, we'll come across some gray whales. Their skin is covered with parasites and other organisms that make their snouts look like rough pieces of rock. We gotta get on their nice side first. Gray whales can attack a large boat, a ship, or a vessel if they sense their calves are in danger. But generally, they're friendly and appear unbothered by rowing kayakers. In some cases, they'll approach small boats and allow humans to touch them, though you're required by law to keep your distance. If it wants to get closer, it will. If it feels threatened, it will act aggressively. Now, let me show you a fish with a tool on its head, the hammerhead shark. Their skull helps them with hunting. Their eyes are placed on the hammer's outer edges and gives them a 360-degree vertical view. But they've got a blind spot in front of their nose. Their heads are like metal detectors. Most of what they want is below the sand surface. So they lightly dip their heads in the sand and sweep up whatever is under there. You'll see them in temperate and tropical waters, both near the shorelines and offshore. They usually move in groups. They're mostly harmless to humans and divers, but there have been a few occasions where they got aggressive. But before they do, they'll give you a bunch of warning signs, and divers know how to handle them. Now, I'll show you something kind of smaller, the sea lion. These creatures are a bit tricky. They're playful, aggressive, arrogant, smart, And above all, curious. Sea lions can't breathe underwater, but they can dive almost a thousand feet deep, and they can hold their breath for a long time. They take in air through their nose, and once they dip their heads in the waters, their nostrils slam shut. If they spot humans at the beach, they'll stay away and wait for them to leave. Wild sea lions aren't the friendliest to anyone, especially if they feel threatened. The approachable ones have been trained in captivity. Beluga whales are next. They're white with bulgy heads, and they're amongst the most social and loudest you'll ever meet. Their upwards-facing mouths make them look like they're smiling. When beluga whales are born, they're a dark gray shade. It takes eight years for their skin to turn white. They can change the shape of their heads by blowing air around their sinuses. 
Beluga whales love humans. Once they make human friends, they don't want to leave. Even though they're wild animals, they become too entrusting with people. Marine biologists suggest staying away for their safety. Have you heard of sea cows? Those are actually called manatees. You'll see some in rivers and others in the ocean. Even though they're large, they usually stay in shallow coastal areas, munching on seagrass, leaves, and algae. Manatees bring their heads to the surface every four minutes or so to breathe. But they can hold their breath longer than that. They're slow travelers, and even if they aren't as smart as dolphins, they can understand colors. These fellas are gentle giants, and they like to approach humans searching for warmth. Next, we've got the basking shark, the second largest shark in the world. Their mouth is their most impressive feature, like me, since it can open more than three feet wide. Okay, you win. These creatures have an intimidating appearance. But despite their size, they're harmless to humans, and divers swim with them. They're very social and can form schools of 100 individuals. They swim near the water surface, filter feeding on plankton. They too have a bunch of teeth that they don't use. Do you know which creature can sing loud songs for 30 minutes? I know, Barry Manatee! Hmm, that might be before your time. <laughs> Actually, it's the humpback whale. Scientists aren't sure why they make those low howls and noises. They might be trying to communicate with others to attract mates. You'll see them near coastlines, feeding on tiny food. And they use their flukes to propel through the water. Humpback whales are less friendly than gray whales because they're very cautious. But they're the heroes of the ocean. They try to save other animals from orcas. And experts say they're capable of decision-making and problem-solving. On one occasion, a humpback whale jumped in to save a whale biologist from a tiger shark. Now, let's try to spot the expert in disguise. The Caribbean Reef Octopus. The specialized color cells help it blend in with the sand and ocean rock's rough texture. But Caribbean reef octopuses are loners, and they like to get around on their own. This creature is also teeny tiny. It can grow almost 5 inches and, with their legs, getting as long as the average person's foot. If you get too close to them, they'll likely turn blue and warn you that they feel threatened. Even though they're trusting, it's better to keep your distance to keep them calm. A weird-looking creature walks around like a living vacuum cleaner down in the ocean's pitch-black depths. I'm talking about sea pigs. They got their name from their pinkish bodies, and they fit in the palm of your hand. These creatures don't swim, they walk around on the seafloor. Their legs consist of 5 to 7 pairs of enlarged tube feet, and they have tentacles around their mouths to fiddle through the mud to find scum to munch on. Yumbo! Since they're vulnerable, they have poisonous skin for protection against other sea creatures. If you encounter one, it'll be quite friendly. But if you want to keep it as a pet, you'll need a very deep tank. Speaking of slimy water creatures, let's talk about comb jellies. They're friendly animals that like to swim close to the shore on warm summer evenings. There are two types of comb jellies, some with two tentacles and some without any. You can spot them at night since they glow in the dark and light up the waters. One of them is the sea gooseberry. On the sand, it looks like a transparent blob of jello, and it can fit into a teaspoon. Unlike jellyfish, comb jellies don't stink because they don't have stinging cells, and they're safe to swim with. Okay, this is how it starts. You're woken up by a strange sound. Not the alarm, though. It's 5 a.m. After a few seconds, you realize the strange sound is a knock on the window. But you live on the 12th floor. Who or what could be knocking? Window cleaners? You live in an ordinary apartment building, not a skyscraper with offices. The knocking is getting stronger. You muster up the courage and go to the window, reach for the curtain, and abruptly pull it aside. What you see is fantastic! <gasps> There are flying or floating small fish outside your window. Thousands of them. A shoal of sardines rising directly to the sky. A few knock on your window as they pass. There are so many sardines, you can't see what's going on outside. But as the last fish flies by, 
the full picture opens before you. Large and small fish fly between the houses. Octopuses cut through the air with their tentacles into a rain cloud. A huge whale is slowly drifting toward the horizon. Above the roof of a nearby house, two sharks chase four sea lions. A neighbor waves to you. He holds a fishing rod from the window and waits for the fish to bite. A school, no, a flock of dolphins flies past your window. They cheerfully whistle as if they're greeting you. What's going on? You turn on the TV. All the channels are playing the same thing. Sea creatures of the Earth have learned to fly, leaving the ocean and filling the air. All flights worldwide are canceled, and fishing vessels are idle in the seas, oceans, lakes, and rivers. And no one knows what happened. Well, you get dressed and go outside. Sea turtles crawl on the ground. They shiver, flap their fins, and rise into the air. A flock of shrimp flies past you. Has the ocean lost its gravity? What happened to all the water? You live in a port town close to the sea, so you decide to go to the coast. You reach the shore and see the water is calm. Gravity seems to be intact, but the sea creatures continue to take to the air. Six months later, people gradually get used to the new natural phenomenon. Fish occupy most of the sky. Some sea creatures penetrate the middle layers of the atmosphere. Smaller birds have almost disappeared since the presence of predatory fish in the sky. But birds of prey that hunt fish gained weight. They've eaten so much that they can't fly anymore. Plump gulls, albatrosses, pelicans, and eagles can hardly walk and barely support themselves. Planes stopped flying and ship travel increased. The world's ecosystem is completely changing. The ocean becomes lifeless. The number of bacteria, microbes, and various nutrients in the water move to the air. People get sick more often, and in some areas, it becomes difficult to breathe. When it rains, millions of shrimp and small fish fall to the ground along with the water. Many predatory mammals that have been feeding on fish begin to starve. They go out to the roads and cities to find food. Scientists research the flying creatures and find that they somehow change the structure of their lungs. But how fish got the ability to fly is still unknown. It seems nature just decided to push people out of their usual environment. Fishermen build balloons to fish in the sky. Some athletes throw a lasso at flying whales and ride them like huge horses. Though the landing can be difficult. Creatures that previously swam only in the very depths of the ocean settle at high altitudes. Researchers discover new, previously unknown fish species. From the ocean depths, a giant octopus rose into the air. Many call it the kraken. This monster has found a new home right on top of Mount Everest. Now everyone is afraid to climb this mountain. The most deep water creatures reach space. On the ISS, astronauts observe amazing animals flying past. They look like aliens from other planets, not Earth. In some areas, sharks descend to the ground for food. In these places, people are afraid to go out. Fishing companies buy huge Boeings and attach nets to it to catch fish in the air. But flights are not safe, especially when a whale suddenly appears smack dab in their path. Authorities impose curfews in many cities. People climb to the roofs and watch an incredible sight at night. Flying jellyfish floating in the air. Thanks to the bioluminescent protein in jellyfish, they glow. Stars in the sky mix with the neon transparent creatures. But be careful! Some of these jellyfish are very venomous. Some people were so fascinated by the beautiful jellyfishes that they touched them and ended up in the hospital. Squid, frightened by the new conditions, release ink into the air. When a lot of squids do this, the ink blots out the light from the sun. Massive traffic jams appear on the roads because electric eels fly through the streets and shock traffic lights. While all of humanity is looking up at the sky, Almost no one has noticed what is happening down here. All over the world, 
people with a strange physical disability show up in hospitals. Weird holes form under people's ears. Doctors don't understand what they're dealing with. But then, one of the patients jumps into a lake, and it turns out he can breathe underwater. All people grow gills. At first, most people refuse to go underwater. But their changed lungs force them to do so, or spend the rest of their lives in a gas mask. Some people are happy to go under the water and start a new life. The human body adapts to the cold temperatures and high pressure. There is a lot of work ahead to create cities and infrastructure, but things are not so bad. There is more space in the water than on land. One year later, humanity begins to fully migrate to the oceans. But instead of a new life, they find trash, a lot of garbage. Billions of tons of plastic are floating in the water. Their new home turns out to be a massive dump that people have created. Global plastic recycling starts in all waters. Every day, people take out tons of trash from the ocean. The water is getting cleaner. Trash dumps appear on land. Five years later, water becomes cleaner. People don't live in garbage anymore. All the plastic is on land. As soon as the problem is solved, humanity begins to build underwater cities. But then all the fish start to fall into the seas and oceans. Everything returns to the usual way of life. People lose their gills, and now they're back on land. Sea creatures live in clean water once more. Philosophers and scientists from all over the world believe that in this way, nature has taught people a lesson. We understand how to live in a world of garbage and how we should care about our planet. People are making a considerable effort to preserve the planet's ecology. Waste recycling plants are built. Every person stops using plastic. Harmony begins between man and nature again. The deeper you go, the creepier they get. You're about to travel to the darkest ocean depths and check whether this claim is true. Are the creatures living there as scary as people think? You go 120 feet down underwater. Pay close attention to the bottom under your flippers. Oh my, what's that terrifying face half hidden in the sand? That's the Northern Stargazer. You can meet this fish in the eastern United States. It buries itself in the sand until unsuspecting prey gets near. Then, the nightmarish creature electrically shocks the poor animal and dines on it. You are moving deeper, to 240 feet under the surface. That's where you spot a colorful, puffy creature, no more than one foot long. It's the sarcastic fringe head. At first, the fish seems to be harmless. Ha! Ah, only unless it's provoked. When this animal is agitated, it opens its huge, huge mouth to fend off predators. This defense tactic is a sight to behold, both surprising and frightening. Luckily, the fish is no threat to people whatsoever. The creature you see next can comfortably live in shallow waters, but you meet it at a depth of 900 feet. You don't even need to wonder why the animal's called the Game of Thrones Brittle Star. Unlike starfish that slowly crawl across the seabed, this creature moves fast. It wriggles its long, flexible arms to get from point A to point B. Its body is protected by a hard calcium carbonate shell. Also called snake stars, these creatures are tiny and easily fit in nooks, cracks, and small crevices in rocks. At a much greater depth of 2,000 feet, you come across the giant squid. For a long time, it was thought to be a creature from legends rather than a real animal. The giant squid was first caught on camera in 2001, and it's exactly as big as its name implies. The creature's eyeballs are the size of soccer balls, and the squid itself can weigh up to 600 pounds. Almost 3,000 feet below the surface, you get spooked by another creepy-looking animal. It's somewhat red and rather small, no longer than one foot long. As you approach the creature, it looks rather docile, or maybe just indifferent. The vampire squid, that's the animal's name, looks like an umbrella with tentacles. It doesn't even produce ink, so you leave it alone. 
Soon after that, at a depth of 3,200 feet, you meet the cookie cutter shark. This creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to big fishes, dolphins, whales, and sometimes even people. Then, using its neatly arranged serrated teeth, it gouges out cookie-sized pieces of meat. This nasty glowing animal doesn't grow larger than 20 inches and lives in the ocean twilight zone. At a depth of 3,300 feet, the light becomes a rare and valuable thing. The animals living that far away from the surface have to evolve unusual features to survive. That's how the barrel eye fish ended up with a transparent head and two super sensitive barrel shaped eyes. Right now, pretty much like always, they're pointed upward, allowing the fish to see potential prey and you. Almost 4,000 feet below the surface, you see something droopy and saggy. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or any muscle. Its jelly-like flesh lets the creature survive incredible water pressure. Despite its appearance, the blobfish is an ambush predator. It usually lies very still on the bottom, waiting for unsuspecting prey to swim by. You go a bit deeper and spot a creature that looks particularly ghastly. The goblin shark senses prey with its snout. The creature's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. When some animal comes too close, the shark catapults its mouth forward to catch it. If your mouth could do the same, you would be able to eat things dangling seven inches away from your face. Even deeper than that, at 5,000 feet, you notice another member of the shark family. The frilled shark looks like an overgrown eel, but its gills are lined with red fringe at the edges, hence the name. The creature's horrifying mouth has 25 rows of razor-sharp backward-facing teeth, 300 in total. The shark prefers to hover in the water, waiting for its prey to come closer. Then, it charges at it like a snake. Suddenly, you see something glow brightly like an electric bulb. But after coming closer, you recoil in horror. The creature looks like an upgraded eel equipped with oversized teeth. That's the deep sea dragonfish that can live at a depth of 6,000 feet. Chemical processes going on inside the fish's body produce an eerie red glow. This glow is used to communicate with other fish. At the same depth, you meet another deep sea inhabitant. Its most prominent feature is its huge mouth. Thanks to it, the gulper eel can swallow its prey whole. Its stomach can expand to a terrifying size when it needs to fit something large. At a depth of 6,600 feet, you come across an angry looking creature with a fishing rod over its head. It's the deep sea anglerfish. The animal has an unusual dorsal spine, even though it's worn only by females. It protrudes above their mouth and has a lure on its tip, some luminous flesh that baits prey. The anglerfish has such a big mouth and its body is so pliable that it can swallow animals twice its own size. You're 7,000 feet down when you see another fish that's glowing in the dark. The black dragonfish is a sly creature. It has its light-producing organs arranged along its belly. The spooky creature also has gleaming flashlights next to its eyes. They help the animal find prey and attract potential mates. At the same depth, you also spot an enormous pill bug. But unlike the critter you can find in your garden, this one is at least 20 inches long. That's the giant isopod, and it is, indeed, related to the roly-poly, as well as crabs and shrimps. These creatures may look somewhat scary, but they're harmless. They feast on other deep-sea animals only after those have passed away. At a depth of 13,000 feet, you notice the ocean floor has become a bit… fluffy? That's because it's covered with zombie worms. These creatures rarely grow to be more than two inches long. And still, they can break down fairly large animals, so strong the acid they produce is. The worm's feathery appearance makes them look like plants. But the truth is, these creatures munch on rock-hard bones of the world's largest animals, such as whales. The grid-eye fish almost scares you out of your mind soon after that. This creature has a pair of large greenish oval plates on the top of its head and no eyes whatsoever. Experts believe that these bony membranes detect light coming from predators, saving the fish's life. 
You're now three miles down below the surface. And that's where you spot something bizarre on the bottom. It's definitely a fish, but it's standing on the ocean floor on three long, rigid legs. Ah, it's the tripod fish. Curious rather than scary. This creature has adapted to the almost complete darkness by giving up on its vision. It has to rely on vibration and touch to sense prey. And then, the fish uses its fins as hands to transport food directly into its mouth. You don't have time to go any deeper before you spot the faceless fish. This slightly off-putting creature has no eyes, and its mouth, smiling a Mona Lisa smile, is underneath its body. For the first time, the faceless cusk, which is the creature's official name, was seen more than a century ago. The next time it happened was only in 2017. Once you've reached a depth of six miles below the surface, you see deep sea cucumbers. These bizarre creatures are much bigger than their shallow water relatives. They spend most of their time on the sea floor. But if they need to escape predators, they are able to swim away. Deep sea cucumbers have bright purplish coloring, tiny feet, and tentacles that surround their mouths. Mmm, cute. The question is, why do these deep sea creatures look so scary? Life is very different there, at the bottom. Tremendous water pressure, a lack of food, and constant darkness. You have to adapt to survive in such extreme conditions. It looks like a prehistoric creature that came from the time of dinosaurs. This scary beast is called the basking shark. It can grow up to 39 feet. People have only reported three of them in the past 160 years. The last sighting was in 2015, and before that, about 80 years ago. These sharks sometimes rise to the surface to filter out small animals, such as shrimps and other small crustaceans, when they want to have a nice, tasty seafood dinner. But when there isn't enough grub at the surface, they go down to the depths of almost 3,300 feet, where they tend to stay for months, which is something researchers discovered using satellite tags. Tag, you're it! Now, basking sharks like to spend their time in more temperate waters, but they can migrate long distances. They live across the globe, but in warm tropical or subtropical areas, they won't go near the surface because they're not fans of high temperatures. The lion's mane jellyfish is not that rare, but it's fascinating how large it is. It's the biggest among jellyfish species and the longest animal. Its total length can reach 120 feet. That's approximately 23 feet more than the longest blue whale scientists know about. The jellyfish has around 70 to 150 tentacles, and they all contain huge amounts of neurotoxins that can seriously harm you if you come in contact with the animal. But people don't usually come across this type of jellyfish because it rarely lives near the coast, preferring the open ocean. Generally, you can find the lion's mane jellyfish no deeper than 65 feet below the surface, where it dines on small fishes, zooplankton, and some other types of jellyfish. It uses its tentacles to catch its value meal. Hey, you want fries with that? The giant phantom jelly comes out of the darkness and depths of the ocean's midnight zone. Its sunhat-shaped bell reaches over 3 feet across. This bell trails four ribbon-like mouth arms that can be up to 33 feet long. This quite rare creature uses its mouth arms to catch unfortunate animals swimming around and not knowing what's coming for them. Giant phantom jelly propels itself through the water with periodic pulses coming from its orange head. It glows faintly and mysteriously in the pitch-black depths. It lives across the globe in all the oceans except for the Arctic. I'm guessing it's too cold. Because of its odd shape, people often call the oar fish the dragonfish or sea serpent. It's about 26 feet long, which makes it the longest bony fish we know about, and lives at depths of 3,300 feet. Oar fish spend most of their time in the deep, dark parts of the open ocean in tropical and subtropical areas. They almost never come to the surface, unless, you know, invited. It's a ribbon-shaped and shiny silver creature with a long red dorsal fin and red or like pelvic fins. Its body has no scales and is very thin. The fish can grow to a length of about 30 feet and weigh 660 pounds. Oarfish have really big eyes that help them see better in their dark, scary surroundings. The frilled shark is definitely one of the gnarliest-looking marine animals out there. 
If you saw it somewhere, you'd probably think you went back to the age of dinosaurs. Yup, the frilled shark is a prehistoric creature because its roots go back 80 million years. This living fossil can grow to be 7 feet long. It got its name from its frilly gills. Even though frilled sharks have the shark part in their name, they swim similar to an eel in a distinctly serpentine way. Its mouth is terrifying. Similar to the maw of the great white shark, it has 300 trident-shaped teeth lined in 25 rows. Hey, come a little closer, huh? Researchers discovered this creature in the 19th century. But people rarely see it. And no wonder. It usually lives at depths of between 390 and 4,200 feet. Most of the time, the frilled shark feeds on squid, swallowing them whole. Its long jaws allowed the frilled shark to gape extra wide and swallow animals half as long as its entire body. Goblin sharks are very rare. Researchers have spotted fewer than 50 of them in more than 120 years. But maybe that's for the best, since we're talking about a pretty scary fella with a narrow snout and sharp teeth. It's also capable of thrusting its entire jaw outward when it wants to catch something. Hmm, sounds familiar. As it's lurking through the dark depths of the ocean, a goblin shark sees a small squid that looks quite yummy. The dangerous animal inches toward the squid. When the poor creature notices the predator, it tries to dart away, but it's too late. The shark has already thrust its jaw the whole three inches out of its mouth. This jaw is connected to the flaps of skin the shark can unfold. This helps a lot because the goblin shark is a sluggish animal, so it's pretty hard for it to chase its food. After finishing its lunch, the goblin shark puts its jaw back in its mouth and swims away as if nothing's happened. Goblin sharks mostly live at the bottom of the ocean. Like many other shark species, they prefer swimming alone. Here's a silver-colored creature with very rough skin. That's the ocean sunfish, with a total length of almost 11 feet. Its other name is Mola. The ocean sunfish is the heaviest of all bony fish out there. People sometimes call it a swimming head because of its bizarre appearance. These creatures have such a weird shape because they're born with a back fin that never actually grows. It just folds into itself as the animal matures and creates a rounded rudder. The sunfish is a bit clumsy. It moves with the help of its mighty fins that allow the animal to swim on its side. This marine inhabitant is a solitary creature. It mostly feeds on zooplankton and jellyfish. The spotted wobegong is one of the world's rarest sharks. It grows to be more than 10 feet long. It may not look as terrifying as some of its shark relatives, but it's pretty good at catching unsuspecting animals swimming past, mostly during the night. The animal has a spiracle, which is why it can breathe while staying still at the bottom of the ocean. It's motionless most of the time, which is why you can barely notice it. Its flat body and large pelvic and pectoral fins blend in with the underwater terrain. That's why they're so good at hiding. This ability helps when these sharks want to protect themselves, too. Wobegong means carpet shark. They usually live close to the ocean floor in coral reefs, on sandy bottoms, and under piers. People have even spotted the shark in the water that is barely deep enough to cover its flattened body. Now, blobfish lack teeth and bones, so they can't actively hunt. Since they don't have much muscle mass, they can barely move around. Hey, I had a roommate like that once. They get their energy from animals they scoop up from the seafloor. They also know how to conserve this energy. That's how it usually goes with deep-sea creatures. They don't have as much food as those animals that swim closer to the surface. Instead, they have special body mechanisms that allow them to save energy for the times when they don't have much to eat. Pressure at the depths where the blobfish lives is 120 times as high as that at the surface. That's why the bizarre creature looks like a weird gelatinous mass only when you bring it up to the surface. The pressure here is not strong enough to keep its body together. Hey, breaking up is hard to do. The white margin stargazer could compete with the blobfish for the title of the ugliest animal in the sea, don't you think? Now, this animal has eyes on the top of its head, together with an upward-facing mouth which the creature uses to hide itself in the sand. That's where it spends most of its time, with only its eyes protruding from the sand. It chills this way until some small animal passes by. 
it can lunge at its target incredibly quickly, literally within milliseconds. This creates a vacuum in the water that pulls in a crab, fish, or some other small, unfortunate animal. Another tactic involves venom. This fish has a venomous spine in its shoulder blade that helps with catching other animals and defending itself against enemies. Even though it's not related to the electric eel, the white margin stargazer can generate an electric shock as powerful as 50 volts. Ow! The Heikegani crab lives off the coast of Japan and has a distinct pattern on its shell that looks like a human face. More specifically, the face of an angry samurai, hence the nickname the Samurai Crab. The scarlet-striped cleaning shrimp is a natural hitchhiker. It stands on the sea floor and waves its long antennae for fish and sea animals to go down and pick it up. Then it pays for the ride by cleaning the host from bacteria and plankton. Sea salps are often confused with jellyfish, although they're closer to Portuguese man-o'-war. They're very quick to mature, growing from newborns to adults in less than 48 hours. The Galapagos Islands are legendary. They've got giant tortoises, blue-footed boobies, Sally Lightfoot crabs, and red-lipped batfish. But if you've ever swum around there, you might have seen something really unexpected in the water. Iguanas! Everywhere! These large marine reptiles eat the algae that grow on underwater rocks. They're strict vegetarians. I bet the fish are happy about that. A long flat tail designed for swimming helps them move around, and sharp claws keep them on the rocks for their daily sunbathing sessions. But watch them closely, they sneeze a lot. They haven't got a cold or anything, they're sneezing out salt. A special gland keeps the salt out of their nose, and they've got to get rid of it somehow. Sounds painful. What's cool is that they don't mind us in the water with them. Because the islands have been so isolated, the creatures here aren't afraid of humans. Fish can fly too. Thanks to their wing-like fins, flying fish can soar a distance of about 600 feet, almost as long as two football fields. They need flight to escape from predators. The skeleton shrimp could be the stuff of nightmares if it wasn't so tiny. As it is, it looks like a stick insect, but almost completely transparent. This creature looks more like a fish from a horror movie than from Earth's oceans. The sea devil anglerfish resides at a whopping depth of 3,200 feet and has no shortage of weird features. Razor sharp teeth, a misshapen body, and an unsettling stare. But perhaps the creepiest thing about the sea devil anglerfish is the way it catches its prey. It has a fishing rod type appendage on its forehead that has a glowing light attached to the end to attract animals. Once these animals come close enough to the light, bam, they're captured by the sea devil's massive jaws. These guys are even capable of eating prey larger than they are, so their eyes aren't bigger than their stomachs. Starfish can cover their prey with their stomachs and eat it outside its body. Then, they simply bring their stomachs back inside. Well, that's handy. Their relatives, sea cucumbers, can do the same party trick, except that they leave part of their guts behind to scare their attacker. It's okay, the missing parts quickly grow back. Cockatoo squids, or glass squids, are a large genus whose members can reach quite impressive size. Yet one thing they have in common is that their bodies are transparent and the internal organs glow in the dark. Despite the hairy octopus looking like it's forgotten to comb its hair in the morning, it's actually its skin that's sticking in every direction. Other sea creatures have a harder time realizing where the octopus itself is this way, I guess. The hairy squat lobster lives in reefs, hiding from its enemies in crevices. If you're lucky to see it, you'll instantly notice the drastic difference between its whitish hairs and vibrant pink and violet claws. If you step on a sea urchin, you're gonna know right away. Look at those spikes! While they're not aggressive, they've got a great defense going against any creature that wants to eat them. Venomous spikes and a poisonous bite. <laughs> Pick your poison, literally. They live in all the oceans of the world. 
so avoiding them is out of the question. They mostly hang out in shallow water, hiding in rock pools and reefs. So unmindful people step on them a lot. The long venomous spikes of the urchin look like needles. They feel like them too. They can go in quite deep. Plus, they release a strong toxin. So, what's the cure? Remove the spikes quickly and wash with salt water. Sea turtles are constantly crying. They're not sad or anything. The weeping is only because they excrete excess salts from their body through their tears. Box jellyfish tentacles grow up to 10 feet long. And each tentacle has 5,000 stinging cells. Not bad for a creature that's mostly just water. Their venom is strong enough to paralyze anything they want to eat. Now, if you happen to get stung, it's going to hurt a lot. Its toxins contain proteins that affect the heart, skin cells, and even our nervous system. No wonder it's considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. I wouldn't recommend using sunscreen, soda, coffee, or other older methods. They don't work. Your best bet is some good old-fashioned seawater. Looks like jellyfish are the rulers of the ocean, not sharks. The margin sea lizard isn't an actual lizard. It's a kind of sea slug that dwells close to the water surface. It swims upside down and somersaults to get food. And let's admit, it looks very cute. When some foreign object gets into an oyster shell, be it a grain of sand, a parasite, or garbage, the thing irritates the mollusk's inner walls. Since the animal can't spit the item out, it envelops it in thin layers that separate from the body. These pearlescent layers accumulate until they form a round pearl. In the past, people believed that pearls were the tears of mermaids. Now we know they're just some decorated debris. Dolphins have highly developed communication. They call each other by name. Each dolphin responds to a specific sound. Mostly they say, stop calling me Flipper. The orca is the largest of dolphin species, and they actually have different cultures. Two orcas from different social groups won't even understand each other's language. They're the only animal known to do this. I wonder if they developed any Google Translate for dolphins. The banded shrimp, or banded boxing shrimp, was really aptly named. It's got bands of color all over its body and always stands in a boxer-like, ready-to-strike pose. The brown-lined paper bubble is another sea slug, and it definitely looks like one. It's got a special ability, though. It can quickly burrow holes in the sea floor, hiding from enemies inside them. The snakefish, as the name implies, looks a lot like a snake but it has a very distinctive feature. It can walk on its fins. Thanks to this peculiarity, it easily crawls from one waterbed to another, choosing habitats more to its liking. On the way, a snakefish can get hungry, for sure, so it often munches on small birds and rodents. It can grow quite big, though, and hunt even larger animals. How much weirder can it get than to walk through the woods and suddenly see a huge and toothy fish stalking some rabbit? The alligator snapping turtle catches its prey by going fishing. Its tongue looks like a worm, and the turtle waits with its mouth wide open at the bottom of a stream, lake, or pond until some unsuspecting fish takes the bait. Then, snap! The jaws come together faster than the blink of an eye, and dinner is served. The mossy jellyfish is normally invisible in the dark abyss where it dwells, but when exposed to light, it will reflect it and shine beautifully. The black swallower might be small, but make no mistake, it could easily gulp down your favorite puppy. It can open its mouth extremely wide, allowing it to swallow prey twice its size. The African tigerfish will eat whatever it finds, and given its own size and that of its monstrous teeth, you can imagine it finds a lot of food. It mostly feeds on other fish, but when nutrition is scarce, it can jump out of the water and catch both insects and small birds right in the middle of the flight. It's not so big as to eat a human, of course, but the name should warn you that it can easily take a bite out of your arm or leg. 
Your brain controls your arms and legs, but with an octopus, each arm is actually kind of independent, with its own special brain, held together by a bigger central brain, kind of like the conductor of an orchestra. The central brain sends higher level signals to each arm, saying things like, move to the left, there's a crab behind the corner, or touch this silly human's foot, let's mess with him a little bit. <laughs> No matter how smart their arms and legs might be, an octopus still needs to look after them all the time. The Stonefish Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contests. Unless the pageant is for best rock look-alike, their tiny unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of… yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on, and it can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast. No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide-and-seek. The Deep Sea Dragonfish If there were a prize for the most hideous fish in the ocean, the deep sea dragonfish would win. With slimy, scaleless skin, massive teeth, and a face only a mother could love, this bad boy of the sea is nothing to mess with. It likes to swim between 700 feet and 6,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, where the waters are the darkest and coldest. Along with some other creatures on this list, the deep-sea dragonfish relies on its bioluminescent body parts to catch prey. It also uses its hanging appendage, which boasts a little red light on the end, coming out from its lower jaw. Many fish mistake this little light for prey, luring them right into the jaws of the deep-sea dragonfish. Very clever dragonfish! Very clever indeed. The Fang Tooth The Mariana Trench is an underwater trench with a depth of 35,000 feet, nearly 7 miles below the ocean surface. Let that sink in. While scientists know the Mariana Trench exists, it's one of the least explored places on Earth. It's also the deepest area of Earth's oceans. And although many creatures down there probably haven't even been seen by humans yet, scientists have had the creepy pleasure of getting to know the fangtooth. The fangtooth fish shamelessly lives up to its name. Just look at that thing! The fangtooth is carnivorous and feeds on just about anything it can find that gets caught in its sharp-toothed mouth. These fish rely on their contact chemoreception to find prey. In other words, they can sense chemical residue that comes off of other living organisms in the deep sea. This is because they don't have any light-producing cells on their bodies, unlike many other deep-sea fish. On top of all that, it's pretty dark down there, so whatever crosses their path, they chomp on. While these guys look pretty scary, they're not a threat to humans. They only grow about 7 inches long. Even so, I wouldn't want to run into one of these things during a relaxing swim in the ocean. The Dunkel Osteus Strangely enough, this prehistoric fish, known as the T-Rex of the seas, had no teeth. Those were replaced with bony plates that allowed it to have the strongest bite among other monsters of its size. The Goblin Shark If you thought the movies about sharks were scary, this next deep sea creature will make you swear off going for dips in the ocean forever. However, it lives 3,000 feet underwater so you'll never likely see it face to face. The goblin shark looks like a cross between a shark and a creature from your worst nightmare. These sharks boast a protruding sword-like snout with a jaw that juts out to match. Unlike other sharks that have more of a gray hue, this creepy thing looks not so pretty in pink. Aside from their scary demeanor, what do scientists really know about the goblin shark? Well, not much except that they can grow up to 18 feet in length. Looks like there's still a lot to learn about these guys, if you dare to. By the way, did you know that sharks don't sleep? 
Many species have to keep water moving over their gills to get oxygen, so they can't fall into a deep sleep like we do. That's why they stay half awake during rest. Typically, sharks don't even close their eyes. The Cookie Cutter Shark This shark is a living horror, with lower teeth being big and sharp, while the upper ones are much smaller. When its teeth fall off, the shark eats them to maintain calcium levels. Pretty smart solution for a shark. The Frilled Shark Studying the frilled shark is like looking through a portal back to prehistoric times. That's because scientists think that these eel-like sharks haven't changed much since their oldest ancestors roamed the deep sea waters, so they're sometimes referred to as living fossils. These sharks' mouths are filled with a terrifying 25 rows of backward-facing sharp teeth, 300 in total. They're designed to grasp prey and hold them tight so they can't get away, according to early studies of the shark conducted in 1884 and published in the Bulletin of the Essex Institute. Luckily for swimmers, the frilled sharks live between 390 feet and 4,200 feet below the ocean's surface, so they'll probably never run into them. Probably. This is probably the worst nightmare of any dentist. The Northern Stargazer Take a look at this cutie. The Northern Stargazer is definitely not something you'd wish to see on the ocean floor. This horrid creature hides its body under the sand leaving its face above to wait for prey. The Tasseled Wobegong Here's another carpet shark on our list. It lies low on the bottom of the sea and patiently waits for its prey to come by. The Australian Ghost Shark The Australian Ghost Shark isn't really even a shark, but a very bony fish. It's also a living fossil. It hasn't changed within the last 400 million years. Believe it or not, sharks and humans have a common ancestor that lived around 440 million years ago. Even though we both evolved in our own way, there are still some signs of that connection. For example, the genome of an elephant shark is very similar to humans. The Leo Pluridon. This list of terrifying creatures would be incomplete without mentioning the terrifying and prehistoric Leopluridon. This carnivorous marine reptile existed during the Colovian stage of the Middle Jurassic era and ruled the waters at 9 feet in length. Scientists believe Leopluridon thrived in this deep sea trench because of its ability to swim long distances and its four paddle-like limbs. While they probably weren't able to propel themselves toward prey like other animals of the area, they did manage to accelerate and attack very ruthlessly and efficiently. Additionally, they relied on their long snouts to smell prey, which leads scientists to believe they didn't rely on sight for hunting. This means they could have thrived in the dark Mariana Trench. Around 150 million years ago, Leopluridon became extinct due to competition for prey against other thriving marine reptiles. And I think I speak for all of us when I say thank goodness for that. Considering that scientists have only explored 5% of the ocean floor and found some of the scariest sea creatures imaginable, one can only dream of what other animals reside in the deep sea waters. Perhaps it's best to keep them in your imagination. Am I right? The Megamouth Shark this shark is a filter feeder, and it's friendly to humans, although its huge mouth can look quite threatening. Like basking sharks, it swims with its mouth constantly wide open, as if it were on Twitter. The Gulper Eel This deep-sea eel has an easily distended belly that allows it to swallow prey twice its size in a single monstrous bite. They have very unusual jaw shapes and can reach about 2 to 3 feet in length. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship. Treasure, gold, diamonds, I'm rich! Well, as you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! 
It's not a shark or a dolphin. It's a saltwater crocodile. Now don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater. But that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry, you know. Watching one from a distance should be okay. Just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in shallow water. If there's one time I'd want to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation. Think you know what lurks in the depths of the ocean? While nearly 95% of our oceans haven't been explored yet, it's hard not to let your imagination run wild. But thanks to brave explorers, deep sea cameras, and awesome archaeologists, we do know about some pretty incredible sea creatures living in our waters today and millions of years ago. From the 9 foot spider crab to the 60 foot prehistoric megalodon, these sea dwellers come in all shapes and sizes. But let's focus on sea creatures famous for their huge size. Can you guess which living species of whale is the largest? Well, it's not the orca, but that's a good guess. The orca is a toothed whale that can grow to anywhere from 23 feet to 32 feet, which is slightly smaller than a school bus. How about the narwhal? Nope, they're not the biggest either. These unicorns of the sea live mainly in Arctic waters and only grow 13 feet to 20 feet in length. And that's including their 9-foot tusk. Tired of guessing? Okay, I give in. The largest whale that still exists today is the blue whale. At a jaw-dropping 82 feet to 105 feet, the blue whale is not only the biggest whale we know of, but is currently the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth. Seriously. These animals are bigger than a T-Rex and even the prehistoric Megalodon. If you were to put a blue whale next to a school bus, it would look like it could swallow it. Think about that. According to National Geographic, a blue whale's tongue can weigh the same as an elephant. And their hearts can weigh as much as a car. That doesn't even sound possible. It's no wonder these giants need to eat about four tons of krill every day. While there aren't too many animals living today that can compete with the blue whale's epic proportions, there is an entirely different species that is a good contender. And it's not quite what you would expect. It's a jellyfish. No, I'm not talking about the little jellyfish that wash up on the shore and ruin a perfectly good day at the beach. I'm referring to the lion's mane jellyfish, the biggest jellyfish around. This invertebrate can grow up to 120 feet long. They also come in different gorgeous colors like red, purple, or even shades of orange. As if their length wasn't impressive, the lion's mane jellyfish boasts a whopping 8 sets of 70 to 150 tentacles. That means they can have up to 1,200 in total. And here's the giant oceanic manta ray, the largest type of ray in the world. Their wingspan can be longer than a bus. These guys can reach 30 feet in length. They also have the biggest brain compared to body size among all fish. Unlike their stingray cousins, mantas don't have venomous tails. And while the lion's mane jellyfish and the blue whale are yet to be beaten for the longest sea creature, there is one marine creature that can grow even larger in length. The Portuguese Physalia physalis, tentacles and all can reach a length of 165 feet long. And that's according to mentalfloss.com. While this thing may look a lot like a jellyfish, it's actually known as a siphonophore. And there are hundreds and sometimes thousands of them that are genetically identical. Their long tentacles help the organism catch prey. And its sting is fatal to most animals, even humans in some cases. What's even creepier is that if one of the tentacles comes off the organism for whatever reason, it can float around the water for days before decomposing. Even if it's detached, this tentacle can still sting you. But don't go running out of the ocean just yet. Your chances of being hurt by a Portuguese Phasalia Phasalis sting are pretty slim. 
However, if you do get stung, the side effects aren't pretty, with welts, stomach cramps, an elevated heart rate, and an upset stomach. While you don't want to go anywhere near these long creatures, they sure are pretty to look at. Check out all those colors! The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period, about 210 million years ago. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weighed more than 75 tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale. And if you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually pretty slim for its size. Its ribcage was only six feet across. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs, but that's not the case at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods, like octopuses and squids. The Alberto Nectes is a bright representative of the Pleosaur family, meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the seas around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. Its neck was a true record breaker. It had a whopping 76 bones in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. They might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed. Or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Some of them were as big as 5.5 inches in diameter. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. This was an enormous predator, with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, pleosaurs, and flightless birds. Meet Ophthalmosaurus. This prehistoric reptile thrived during the late Jurassic period and lived in oceans all over the world. Ophthalmosaurus weighed somewhere around 6,000 pounds and grew to approximately 16 feet long, according to NewDinosaurs.com. That's about the same length as the beluga whale that exists today. It's too bad these guys went extinct before we had a chance to see them ourselves, as their cartoonish wide eyes and dolphin-like features are pretty darn cute. Of course, the ophthalmosaurus evolved over time to become ophthalmologists, or eye doctors that we know today. No, that's just a lie. Just testing you. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head, decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth, plus something special. Pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Pleosaur family and lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 to 70 million years ago. Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake, and it'd be an honest mistake. Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately four tons. Their mouths were full of razor-sharp cone-shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey, thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. 
At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom in search of particular types of fish. Huh, looks kind of like Nessie to me. The sight of its fin in the water nearly stops your heart. It's the reason you feel so uneasy going for a swim at the beach. That massive, razor-toothed hunter that's made its name known, the Great White Shark. So, if the ultimate terror of the sea is leaving the area, it must be for a good reason. But what could possibly scare the Great White away? A giant Lovecraftian monster that makes even Megalodon look tiny? Nah, not even close. Nothing can clear a portion of the ocean as quickly as orcas can. When their powerful pods come looking for food like seals and squids, even the biggest, scariest sharks leave the area without looking back. It's not known if these whales specifically target great whites, or they're just keeping the competition out of the area. But what marine experts do know is that sharks flee, sometimes not even coming back until the following year. Yeah, makes sense. Orcas are much larger than great whites in size. They have plenty of teeth, and they'll use them to satisfy their merciless desire for meat. Orcas are also highly intelligent and will work as a team to get what they want. Whether that's catching a school of fish, getting seals off the ice, or even chasing down humpback whales. So, if the great white shark itself is scared of the mighty orca, should you be? Well, me personally, I keep my distance from any wild animal. But maybe this will help you sleep better at night. Orcas are known to be picky eaters. Good news for you, human isn't on the menu. They aren't likely to change their diet just because you're in the water today. Oh, by the way, orcas aren't even whales. They're technically the largest species of dolphin. And sharks are also afraid of their relative, the bottlenose dolphin. Even a single bottlenose is too powerful for a shark, but they're tougher when they travel as a pod. Sharks are easily outmaneuvered by the highly agile marine mammals. They use that blunt snout like a battering ram. This basically annoys the shark so much that it just leaves the area. Now, if you think about other top hunters in the animal kingdom, wolves always come to mind. Packs can take over vast territories. And since they're at the top of the food chain, they get to pick and choose from a large menu with anything they please. They're highly intelligent, fast, and agile. But probably their biggest advantage? Numbers. If grizzlies or mountain lions try taking advantage of them, the numbers game always works in the wolf's favor, leading to the hunter becoming the hunted. Even without numbers, they dominate and terrify. It's too hard for any other animal to target a lone wolf, so even they are usually left alone. Imagine being able to pounce a wild boar in below freezing temperatures while dressed in orange against a completely snow-covered white environment. Siberian tigers are clearly not playing around. Over 10 feet long and weighing up to 400 pounds, they're the largest of all wild cats. This kitty could easily jump right over your head while carrying double its body weight. The only animal that can really challenge this king of the forest is a large enough brown bear, and it'd be a close call. No wonder the Siberian tiger is the top of the food chain in its part of the globe. As for the top boss in the waters of South America, that would be the green anaconda. Not even jaguars and caiman are safe around the biggest snake in the world. The murky waters of riverbanks camouflage the giant snake perfectly. They go unnoticed, sitting there waiting for something to come have a drink. And then, whoosh, the snake strikes. It uses its sharp curved teeth and 15 feet of pure muscle to hold its lunch in place. Luckily for most animals, after eating their fill, anacondas can go weeks or even months without worrying about their next meal. But the world's biggest snake isn't the most dangerous. That title belongs to the black mamba. Lions, spotted hyenas, giraffes, and even elephants will avoid the mamba at all costs. They all know one bite can stop them very quickly. Growing up to 14 feet, it's the second longest venomous snake in the world after the king cobra. 
The African black mamba does hold the top spot as the world's fastest snake. It slithers along going 12 miles per hour. That's about where most treadmills max out. Not top dog, but worth a mention, is the green anaconda's neighbor, the electric eel. Very few animals are willing to take on such a highly charged creature. Electric eels have around 6,000 special cells that can produce up to 800 volts of electricity. That's more than six times the standard U.S. wall socket. That's enough to knock a horse off its feet and to power holiday lights. In 2019, a Tennessee aquarium hooked some tree lights up to their eel tank. Every time the eel shot the water, the trees lit up. Now, it's been said that the electric eel can recycle its volts in a process called revolting. Nah, I made that up. One more truthful eel fact to knock you off your feet. Electric eels are air breathers. They have to surface about every 10 minutes to fill their mouth with air. Yep, their single lung is in their mouth. Does the king of the jungle reign unchallenged? In books and movies, sure. In real life, eh, not so much. For one, their home is on the African plains, not the jungle. A whole assortment of contenders, like hyenas, leopards, and crocodiles, are always trying to take the king's crown. Even zebras and giraffes can stop the big cats with a quick kick if they're cornered. If we go by bite force, the African Nile crocodile has the biggest that humanity has ever measured. Its jaws are five times more powerful than that of a lion's. Now earlier, with the water critters, all you had to do was avoid the water. Good luck avoiding a lion! They can run 50 miles per hour, jump the length of a school bus, and climb trees. The lion's biggest challenger for the apex role is the African wild dog. These two are constantly going at it because they hunt for the same food in the same area. Where there's a big pride of lions, the dogs have no choice but to flee. But they've got one thing against the cats. Endurance. Lions might reach incredible speeds, but that's only in short bursts. It takes too much energy to carry 400-plus pounds of muscle over long distances while going as fast as you can. African wild dogs, though, have long, slender legs and big lungs for their body size. Meaning, they can run fast and keep it up for miles. That's how they hunt. Their lunch just gets tired of running. There's one animal brave enough to take on the king if the cat gets too curious. The hippo. They may seem cute and squishy. But hippos are one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Based on statistics, you should fear them way more than great white sharks. And there's nothing squishy about them. Hippos are pure muscle and weigh as much as a car. Their pointy canine teeth can grow longer than your forearm. These guys aren't afraid of anything. Even lions and crocodiles prefer to keep their distance. Their name means water horse. And they do spend up to 16 hours a day submerged. Funny thing is, hippos can't really swim. If you see one swimming, it's actually pushing itself off the lake or river bottom. It can still be even the best Olympic swimmer speed, so watch out! Yep, move aside, Leo! Hippos are the true apex animal of Africa. But I wouldn't get close enough to give them the award. As for the ruler of the forest, make way for the grizzly bear. Weighing over half a ton, you'd be mistaken thinking these large fluff balls are slow and bumbling. Being able to maintain a speed of 25 miles per hour for long stretches is too easy for the behemoth brown bear. Uphill, downhill, and on every terrain, they're the off-road SUV of the animal world. Without having any natural enemies, this bear is at the top of its local food chain. Good thing they sleep for a third of the year. Just hope you don't run into a grizzly, um, ever. But especially right before it's about to go into hibernation. They spend the autumn months fattening up for winter. And they're even hungrier than usual. Now, being the largest bird of prey in North America, it's no wonder the golden eagle is found all over the continent in woodlands and mountain ranges. Their wingspan is nearly 8 feet. And they don't call it eagle vision for nothing. These birds can spot a rabbit from 3 miles up in the air. 
It'd be like you seeing an ant while standing on top of a 10-story building. Golden eagles can also make quick dives from a great height. During these dives, they can reach speeds up to 200 miles per hour, as fast as a flying arrow. Some sharks have an eerie ability to spit out their stomach and then pull it back into place. Well, that would be handy. Most sharks eat huge amounts of food, but the problem is they can't digest everything they've gulped down. So they need a way to get rid of such stuff as sea turtle shells and beaks, bird feathers and bones, lobster claws and whatnot. And then these amazing creatures willingly barf up their whole stomach, along with all the contents. After the shark is done, it pulls its main digestive organ back in. And the entire process usually takes no more than a second. Some shark species, like great whites or mako, have a special eye-warming system. Their retina heats up their eyes and brain. This not only helps them detect movement better, but also improves resolution. As for the mako shark, this species often travels vertically across different temperatures. Unlike most people with only one movable jaw, sharks can freely move both their lower and upper jaws. This allows them to get a better grip on their meal and chew it up faster and more thoroughly. That's comforting. Sharks give birth to a large number of little ones at once. It depends on the species, of course, but let's say the blue shark is famous for producing more than 130 pups at a time. Great white sharks have a more powerful bite than most jungle cats. A 20-foot-long underwater hunter can produce a force of more than 4,000 pounds per square inch. And that's a bite four times stronger than that of a lion or tiger. People with their measly 150 to 200 psi bites aren't in the running whatsoever. Swell sharks defend themselves by swallowing huge amounts of water. Then the shark's body becomes twice its normal size, and this scares potential danger away. Sharks can grow more than 50,000 teeth during their lifetime, but not all of their teeth are the same. The strongest and most massive ones are at the front, and those closer to the back are smaller and not so powerful. But if the front teeth are damaged, these weaker ones can replace them. It's possible because sharks' teeth aren't as deeply rooted as humans and can move. Shark skin has the same feel as sandpaper. It's made of teeny teeth-like scales. They point towards the animal's tail. This helps to reduce the friction that occurs when sharks move through the water. Whale sharks have extremely thick skin. In some places on their body, it can be 6 inches thick. It's one of the toughest in the animal world. Scientists have to make loads of effort if they want to get this creature's blood sample. Sharks have an incredible sense of smell. But besides that, they use one more sense to detect other animals. There are special pores around their head, near the nostrils, and under the snout. Those are special organs, something like second sight. Every creature generates a tiny electrical field. Thanks to the pores, sharks can spot these electrical fields and figure out where other animals are. Sharks are incredibly sharp-eared. They can hear their potential meal from 3,000 feet away. They can also catch low-frequency sounds, like the ones produced by a fish's contracting muscle tissue. Sharks have been around for more than 400 million years. It means they've lived through four out of five mass extinctions. This makes them way older than Mount Everest, humans, dinosaurs, and even trees. These creatures go back to the period when coral reefs were just beginning to form. Some shark species can jump out of the water, like the great white shark or the basking shark. They're known to leap from more than 8 feet up into the air. Thanks to this maneuver, they can catch such animals as seals or seabirds. But unless you're in South Africa, you aren't likely to see sharks jumping out of the water. Shark skeletons are made of muscle and cartilage, which are lighter and twice less dense than bones. This makes sharks more flexible, which allows them to make sharp turns when they're chasing other animals. Hammerhead sharks have a weirdly shaped head for a reason. Thanks to it, these creatures have incredible 360-degree vision. Their eyes are tilted a bit forward, and it allows them to have an overlapping field of view. The goblin shark's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. They can unfold from the animal's snout for up to 3 inches. It allows the animal to catapult its mouth forward to catch other marine creatures. Sharks don't sleep as you do. Some species have to keep swimming all the time. Otherwise, water will stop flowing through their gills and they won't be able to breathe. Others do rest, but they don't enter an unconscious state. 
they just go into special rest periods. These creatures don't have eyelids. That's why their eyes remain always open, and their pupils monitor their surroundings. They also keep their mouth open so that the water can pass through their gills. Sharks can travel remarkably long distances without needing any rest, all thanks to their bizarre sleeping pattern. For example, great whites can swim distances of more than 2,000 miles without stopping to eat or rest. How come these creatures don't starve? They draw on the fat stored in their livers. By the way, this organ can compose up to a third of the animal's body weight. Contrary to popular belief, sharks do not and cannot swim in reverse. Their tails propel them forward, and their pectoral fins help them to keep their balance and turn. It means that, anatomically, these animals can't move in any direction other than forward. Sharks have no vocal cords. They can't produce sounds to communicate with one another or express their emotions. That's why they have to use body movements, like twisting their bodies or flipping over. Sharks live in all of the world's oceans, but several species also inhabit freshwater rivers and lakes. For instance, bull sharks have been found in tropical rivers. They're also known to be able to swim between fresh and salt water. The smallest shark out there is the dwarf lantern shark. This unique creature doesn't grow longer than 8 inches. But the shark makes up for its tiny size in other ways. For example, some of its organs emit light. And since the creature lives in the shallow waters, this helps to camouflage it in the rays of sunlight. Blue sharks eat a lot often more than they need. Some of this food can remain undigested for weeks till it's needed for energy. Sharks have something that looks similar to a tongue, but this organ is called the basheal. It's the front section of the cartilage that goes from the shark's chest to its mouth. It doesn't move and is pretty much useless. The so-called tongue doesn't take part in the process of feeding. It isn't covered in taste buds. Its only real use might be that it supports some of the bones connecting the shark's gills. There are hundreds of shark species in the world, more precisely, around 500. Some of them are pretty bizarre. Just look at the goblin, basking, or cookie-cutter shark. All these sharks vary in size, from several inches to dozens of feet long. They also live in absolutely different environments. Tiger sharks eat whatever they can get their jaws around. Some of the weirdest things they've munched on are video cameras, bags of money, license plates from almost any U.S. state, dog leashes, you name it. Each whale shark has a unique pattern on its skin. These spots and stripes can be used to identify individual sharks, just like fingerprints are used to identify people. The blunt-nosed six-gill shark can dive to a depth as great as five Empire State Buildings. Baby sharks are called pups. When they get born or hatch, they are already fully nourished. And if they choose to swim away from their mama shark, they don't need to hunt for food for at least several weeks. Uh-oh, did somebody say baby shark? 450 million years ago, no, I wasn't around then, the sea level was higher, coral reefs started to form, the climate on our planet was stable and warm, not even dinosaurs were around yet. The time when bony and jawed fish we know as sharks appeared. They've been dominating the oceans and making other marine creatures flee in fear ever since. Many of them, like great white sharks, have evolved and adjusted to life in the open ocean as hunters with a pretty high position in the food chain. They're less diverse today than before. One of the reasons is the asteroid strike from the age of dinosaurs. After it reduced the number of shark species, only smaller and deepwater kinds that ate primarily fish survived. They started getting bigger over time. Near the surface, sharks such as makos or great white ones develop faster movements and are somewhat between gray and blue to blend in with their surroundings. The epaulet shark can even walk on the land. It can't take a walk on the beach because it can't breathe outside of the water, but it lives on coral flats in shallow tropical waters, so it can walk in kind of a crawling motion. But deep down below, there are mysterious, alien-looking, often huge shark species that didn't come to the surface, which is why they didn't need to adjust to the new environment and different conditions. They haven't changed a lot through time, so they're some living fossils. These creatures mostly don't have five gill slits, the most common number, but six or seven. It's because there's less oxygen the deeper you go in the ocean, so they need more gill slits. 
sharks on the surface evolved to have fewer gill slits. Six-gill sharks are the most primitive sharks we have today. Their skeletons are like those of ancient extinct sharks, and they can survive only in very deep waters. Like cats, sharks have a layer of reflective cells placed inside their eyes, which helps them see better in the dark, deep sea or cloudy waters. Sharks on the surface have big eyes because they evolved to hunt in the sunlight, so they tend to rely on their vision. Those that live in shallow waters have small eyes, so they can protect themselves from the sand. Like some other deep-sea creatures, six-gill sharks also have bigger eyes to take in as much light as possible. They have more light-sensing rods, but don't distinguish colors that well. In the ocean's twilight zone, with the minimum of sunlight, there's a couple of bioluminescent shark species. They don't take in light within their eyes, but produce or re-emit it with their bodies. Their skin or organs have specialized cells that produce a soft blue-green light. Deep-sea creatures that produce their own light do that to attract their prey, deter animals from going after them, or, scientists think, communicate with each other. It can even help them to camouflage. They do it by hiding their silhouettes from animals going after them. They produce enough light to match their surroundings. The biggest luminous underwater creature is the kite fin shark. Found swimming 980 feet below sea level, preying on ground fish or smaller sharks. It can grow almost 6 feet long and lives 3,200 feet below sea level. Deep sea sharks are also bigger than those on the surface. The Greenland shark can grow up to 24 feet long, bigger than a great white. There's a thing called deep sea gigantism. Creatures in nutrient-poor depths of the ocean grow bigger because, that way, they lose less energy as heat. The Greenland shark lives its life in slow motion. It has a slow metabolism and can go very long periods without food. With their slow pace, they evolve to live up to 500 years at depths of 7,200 feet. Sharks in shallow waters catch their prey, relying on agility and speed. But for them, it's easier because there's plenty of food on the surface. Deep sea sharks, with less food and slower life rhythm, had to develop a different style. They're more opportunistic, definitely not picky, and don't care if their future meal is alive or not. Frilled shark, another living fossil from the darkest depths, hasn't evolved much through time. And they're one of the last of their kind, with all of their relatives already gone extinct. It grows up to 7 feet long, primarily hunts on squid, and catches other sharks and fish. It looks like a dinosaur, a snake-like face, a long, smooth, thin body that moves in a serpentine way. It can propel itself with the power of its tail and curl like snakes. They don't swim in a straight line like other sharks. Cookie-cutter shark grows up to 20 inches. It got the name because of the way it feeds, biting off small pieces. It's a parasite creature which means it feeds off bigger animals but leaves them alive. They have sharp teeth and sometimes even swallow those that fall off on purpose. Some researchers think it could be because they live in the depths that are nutrient-poor. If they swallow the teeth, they could recycle calcium and other material from it. Prickly shark is a rare and unusual creature with many thorn-like denticles and two small dorsal fins. It lives mostly in the depths of the Pacific region, up to 1,900 feet. Ghost sharks are not even real sharks, but fish closely related to them and rays. They have big pectoral and pelvic fins, two dorsal fins, pretty big eyes, and unlike their cousins, have a single external gill opening. Ghost sharks have slender tails and can grow up to 80 inches, silver to blackish color. They sometimes live in rivers and coastal waters, but also in the depths of the ocean of 8,200 feet or even deeper. They are pretty weak swimmers, so they tend to feed on invertebrates and small fish. Goblin sharks. Swimming through the deep sea, this creepy shark with a flabby body suddenly sees a small, innocent squid. It goes toward it, but the potential snack notices it and quickly starts moving to dart away. It seems like the plan could work at first, but then the shark suddenly thrusts the jaw of its mouth and catches the poor little squid in a second. After the meal is finished, the animal simply fits the jaw back into the mouth and goes away as if nothing happened. This is possible because it has a jaw connected to 3-inch long flaps of skin, which is why it can unfold from the snout. 
It can grow up to 12 feet long with a weight of 460 pounds. Scientists think goblin sharks are mostly active in the morning and evening. The shark has a long, prominent snout and specific sensing organs on it. It uses them to sense electrical fields in the dark oceanic depths. Seven-gill shark is a big cow shark, brown to silver-gray on top, white underneath, black and white spots, with a thick body, a small dorsal fin, and a wide, blunt snout. It can grow up to 10 feet long, mostly lives in the depth of 1,870 feet, but you can also find it in deep channels and bays. It can be aggressive toward humans if provoked, so don't. Like most deep-sea creatures, it's an opportunistic hunter that's not quite picky but likes to go after dolphins, seals, porpoises, and other marine animals. Megamouth sharks mostly live in the depths of 15,000 feet and spend most of their time in the dark, like me. Scientists discovered it in 1976 because it went near the surface at night to feed on zooplankton. That's the only time these sharks go there. During the day, they return to their quiet, dark, and mysterious depths. They are filter feeders, which means they keep their mouths wide open while swimming, so they filter the planktons they like to eat. There are organs that produce light inside of their mouths, which attracts potential prey, such as pelagic crustaceans. These sharks live in the deep parts of the ocean, but you can rarely find them below almost 2 miles. Scientists think some other, stronger bony fishes outcompeted them. Deep parts of oceans became oxygenated around 70 million years ago, and sharks have been around way longer. But bony fishes adjusted and adapted efficient ways to use oxygen, while sharks were slow with adaptations, so they lost. Also, oceanic depths are way colder, which is challenging for fish and the rest of cold-blooded animals because the speed of their metabolism widely depends upon the external temperature. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends.